Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of The Locker Room. I am your host. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Reggie. Now, listen, Kevin Durant will regret this decision. <laughs> Now, you guys might be like, well, what is this guy talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Brooklyn Nets lost at home last night to the Boston Celtics by a score of 103 to 92. Now, Kevin Durant came in last night, 31 points, 13 of 24 from the field, as you guys can see, in 40 minutes. So Kevin Durant played a very, very efficient game. Um, didn't shoot too well from the three-point line, but you know what? He still gave the Brooklyn Nets 31 points, was still the team's highest scorer. So when I talk about Kevin Durant regretting this decision to join the Brooklyn Nets, I mainly am talking about Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving is a very, very good basketball player, but the reality of the situation is, is that Kevin Durant should have never joined Kyrie Irving in Brooklyn. And I honestly feel like Kyrie Irving tricked Kevin Durant into joining the Nets so that Kyrie Irving could go home and, you know, be close to his family. Me personally, I think KD really had no desires to go to Brooklyn. He was pretty much swindled by Kyrie Irving. And the reality of the situation is, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Brooklyn Nets have now been together for four years. And they have yet to get out of the second round. Now, when we look at the Boston Celtics, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a well-oiled machine they got going up there in Boston. They're playing some really, really good basketball. Now, as you guys can see last night, JT and JB, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, each had 29 and 34 points, respectively, Jalen Brown being the leading scorer on the team last night. Now, listen, this game last night came down to matchups. Now, when you look at the Boston Celtics, their two best players are Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and the Brooklyn Nets' two best players are are Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. So Jason Tatum and Kevin Durant, as you guys can see on the screen, they'll pretty much cancel each other out. Where I see this being a problem for the Brooklyn Nets is the Jalen Brown, Kyrie Irving matchup. Jalen Brown is head and shoulders a better player than Kyrie Irving. And I don't care what anybody says about that. Now we're gonna take a quick listen to Kevin Durant after the game. Make or miss league is about offense uh, in his league. So they made shots tonight. Uh, I think we made them, their looks a little, you know, tougher than they usually are. To, you know, they've been the best offense in the, in the history of the league, right? 103 points, 43 percent from the field. You know, three-point line killed us. Is it, I guess, encouraging at all that at the after end of the last game you said you guys needed to play solid? You guys played solid, just came down to the three-point line. You can't look at it like that. Nah, we want to win. Understanding that uh, you guys acquitted yourselves pretty well defensively against that team, considering how good they've been. Um, on the other end, they didn't have Robert. They didn't have Marcus. What did they do differently at all, if anything? Nothing. I don't think that, you know, you got such a deep team. You got a team that's been together, good continuity. Uh, There's a next man up mentality for them, you know. So uh, uh, Robert Williams haven't been there all year, and they 19 and 5, you know. So Marcus Smart in and out the lineup, they got – they still got Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon to bring in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Two guys that can pretty much do the same thing he does. So they got a deep team. Kevin, it seemed like every time you guys got it to two possessions or a little under that, you know, they would respond to rack it up a little more. Just how much of that was energy exerted to, to get to that point that maybe caused you guys to get that final barrier and tie it or, or beyond or, or something else? No, they just made timely plays. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, they do got they have a lot of space out there. You playing five out, you know they can easily drive and get to the paint. They playing against a team like that, no matter how much they struggle, thirteen points in the third quarter for them. You always feel like you could be in the game when you're shooting a three like that, and when you got space like that, so you can get drives to the rim, you can get fouls. Some of your plays can work more when you got that much space and shooting. So um, you got to give them credit. Um, we had our chances. You know we cut the lead in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, so they just made more shots. Kevin, obviously this team is two wins away from a title last year, so they've given a lot of people a lot of different problems. But specific to the last year and a half or so, why do you think you guys have struggled so much to beat them? They're a big team. They shoot the ball well. They got good length. And, um, you know, so you got to match that if you want to be able to compete, you know. And, you know, they, they 
we don't have a big margin for error, you know. You know, they can play he like a thir at 13 points in the third and still be in good shape, you know what I'm saying? So that you make up with that with your shooting and your length and you know, they got a lot of it there. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about Kevin Durant for a second. Now, when Kevin Durant was on the Warriors, what Ty Lue said the Cleveland Cavaliers strategy was in the finals against the Golden State Warriors, it was to stop Steph Curry. So what did that do? That pretty much freed up Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant was able to simply get buckets in the finals with the Golden State Warriors. That is why he won back-to-back -back finals MVPs and probably would have won three had he not gotten injured in 2019. The vast difference with the Golden State Warriors and the Brooklyn Nets is that KD is now the number one option. So teams are going to try and stop Kevin Durant and make somebody else beat them. This is where Kyrie Irving comes in. Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, I don't believe Kyrie Irving is good enough to beat teams in the playoffs if they're going to stop Kevin Durant and take him out the game. I don't believe Kyrie Irving has that type of talent. In my opinion, he's too small. Now, when you look at the NBA, what is the average height in the NBA? It's six feet, seven inches tall. Kyrie Irving is standing at 6'2 with sneakers on. So yes, is he a phenomenal ball handler? Sure. Is he a Hall of Famer? Sure. Top 75, he says he should have been in there. I say no, right? But uh, you know what? Like I said, I'm taking nothing away from the guy. He's had a phenomenal career. But we've got to just be realistic about Kyrie Irving, man. He hasn't done anything since that shot against the Golden State Warriors in the 2016 NBA Finals. He has to update his resume. And unfortunately for Kevin Durant, he just chose the wrong teammate, man. I feel bad for the guy. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens with the Brooklyn Nets after this season because I am of the mindset, if they don't get out of the second round this season, you've got to blow this thing up. Now, Kevin Durant put in his trade request last summer. Joe Sy told him, hell no, and he had to come back and play this season. And I got to give credit to KD because it seems as if he's come into this season and he's playing in good faith. As you guys can see, he's giving it everything he's got. And, you know, we'll see where the chips fall come April, May, and June, even though I don't think this team has the capabilities to get to an NBA Finals. But I want to know what you guys think, man, in the comments down below. Do you think Kevin Durant is going to regret his decision to join Kyrie Irving in Brooklyn with the Nets, man? Let me know. This was another installment of the locker room. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Get out of here, man. That's, That's my team. Hey, right yo. Right Cheehoo. Yeah. Hey, Patty coming back to the BK. Wow, Black tall, and white. Hey. Hey, you was balling. Oh, yeah, 40 tonight. There's going to be problems for the Boston Celtics this year. I'm telling you. Fuck out of here. We know how to lock Patty ass up. <laughs> this guy's a problem.